Hello, you stunningly gorgeous people of the internet. My name is Anna. Welcome back or welcome to my channel. We talk about books here and I like to think we have a pretty damn good time. Today, I have a video for you that is fun for the whole family. Gather ye young, gather ye old. Just kidding. Definitely not a video for the whole family, though I am going to make it as PG as possible. Spooky dookie season is upon us. It's, it's gathering momentum and soon it will be here. So I figured what better way to celebrate that spooky dookie season than to talk about the books that audibly made me gasp and say, what the f I'm not gonna be going too deep into a lot of the topics about this, but I definitely implore you to do some research on these books before you go into them if they're a little too graphic for your taste. Probably one of the most recent shocking books that I read, and it's not necessarily shocking and super graphic in the way that it's written. It's just much more of like a mental, whoa, how did, how did you come up with that? Ma'am, ma'am? How did you come up with that? And that is The Piano Teacher by Elfridi Jelinek. This is about a piano teacher. She's kind of in her late 30s to early 40s. She lives with her mother. She lives a very, very sheltered life. But at the core of her is this very beating, vibrant, desire. She starts to take on this student. He's a little bit younger than her. They embark on this incredibly tumultuous relationship. It's very, oh, it's it's not even like it's, it's so sexual in nature, though it is very sexual in nature. That's not entirely what the book gets into. It's just much more of like the mentality of the main character. It speaks any sort of mimicry to things that are going on in your world in there. It is a little bit shocking. Barely any breaks. It's just kind of like a block of words coming at you, but it's written so well, and that's probably the eeriest part of it. It's depicted so perfectly in the book that it makes you kind of question, oh, oh, is it just me who's maybe thought of those things? Or, or, or there, there's, other, there's other people out there who are going through things. It kind of makes you look at the value of yourself and the people around you. So this book uh, definitely is a deep one, a dark one. Really intrigued to read more by Jelinek as well. Um, she has kind of a tendency to be a very lustful and dark writer, but really fantastic writing. So what's a girl to do, you know? Conflict. Okay. And to kind of go off of that, I'm going to be talking about a book that I don't even know where my coffee is, which is really devastating. I have absolutely no idea where it went. But this is a book that I read in the summertime, which I'm happy that I did because it is a kind of notoriously dark book, but that is Hurricane Season by Fernanda Melchor. Oof, oof, oof. If you've read this novel, I think you know that this isn't like the most horrifically written thing. There's just something about this novel that the the ambiance of the novel will resonate with you for a very, very long time. There's a witch in this village and she is found dead and it's kind of retracing and going back into the lives that were affected by this witch and how they came to be and kind of the groups of people that the witch surrounded themselves with. Oh my goodness. So vivid in the way that it's written. It just, you understand the color scheme of this novel. You understand the design of this novel. You know exactly when they enter into these dark places, you know exactly what it sounds like in there, how much water is dripping from the cement. But also looking at how people are impacted and how lenient people can be when they're looking for something in someone and someone to kind of save them. Oh my god, this is a really dark read, but there's just something about this novel that really, ooh, 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 you feel it from tippity toe to head, head to toe, baby. You feel it, you feel it. I also wanna say that uh, there's a lot of like historically 
disturbing novels. You have Lolita, you have American Psycho, you have Naked Lunch. I'm not gonna really get into those. This is just kind of kind of be a list of maybe more modern books, but those are definitely books that I would have put on this list, but I just want to kind of make a little bit of a fresh list. I guess if we're gonna talk about disturbing books, we need to acknowledge kind of the, the modern disturbed Ooh, ah. A Little Life obviously goes on kind of every disturbing list, but I do feel like what makes A Little Life different, this has a shred of kind of light to it. You're rooting for these characters and it's all about friendship and how how fundamental it is into kind of helping us cope when we feel like we have a void in us and nothing else can help us. This book, yeah, definitely difficult, notoriously difficult, but this isn't my pick for Yanagahari. Um, the People in the Trees. What's going on with that book, okay? Uh, uh, who said that she could do that, you know? Who said... Ugh, I'm so upset that I gotta move my position. <laughs> Who said that she could do that? This book was Yanagahari's, I believe, first novel, her debut. It's written very well. It's classic Yanagahari style with checking off every single box of a character's personality and the things around them. This follows a scientist and he is working on this incredibly remote island and this elusive group of people and they have this ability to not age and so he's looking into what makes them have that trait that's fine that's great whatever there's allegations against him which he vehemently denies and the book is kind of looking into somebody's successes and their ultimate demise and it's a really unfortunate ending. That's all I have to say. I still think about it and it left me with my jaw completely on the floor. So on the floor that it might still be there. So I don't know how I feel about that book, but the whole premise of it led me up this mountain and then just tore me down. Blah. After that, I have a novel that I read a while ago and it was great. I read it when I was in California. There's a movie adaptation of it as well. That is Mysterious Skin. Mm. This book is kind of, I think has, has a reputation for being a very sad, moving book. It's all about how people cope with something incredibly traumatic that has happened to them and what they use to kind of mask that. This is about two boys. One of them believes that he had been abducted by aliens because there's a there's a day in his life where about five or six hours completely went missing. It feels very in the vein of like the early 90s when books and movies were trying to figure out how to address some of these very serious issues. One of the first books that I read that was addressing some of these topics, I thought it was done well and I think it shows just how children try to cope with the unbelievable. So I'll leave that at that. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about maybe the, like one of the kind of classics, I guess you could say. This is by Hubert Selby Jr., the famed author of Requiem for a Dream, though I feel like more people have watched the movie Requiem for a Dream than maybe read the book. I feel like Last Exit to Brooklyn is probably one of his most famous books. This is all about 1950s Brooklyn when it wasn't the hipster haven that it is now and it was full of people just trying to get by. Very transgressive fiction. Selby experiments with a lot of formatting of text. It's all short stories, but there's a couple of central characters that weave between the different stories. Really very like 50s kind of feel where everything was rugged and tense. And if you were different, you know, you were immediately um, ostracized. This book I read when I first moved to New York City, kind of not really understanding what it was. And I just read this when I was on the subways, just in, in the cars feeling the, the pulse of the city around me and feeling just how these ancestors of the city created this freedom for a lot of people now. King Kong Theory by Virginie Despont. This book I read because I appreciate Despont as a person. I think she's very 
groovy. You can feel just how aggressive but passionate she is about the things that she's talking about. Some of the things I agree with, some of the things I absolutely don't agree with, but I think it's, it's very difficult to not take away how strong she is. This is kind of her biography, her memoir, talking about things that have happened to her. Really, oof, oof. Oof, some of the things that come out of her mouth, damn. And then I'm gonna talk about two books that I absolutely don't really like, but they really left my jaw hanging. Totally agape, just, uh, what the f did I just read? And the first one is going to be Tampa by Alyssa Nutting. Tampa is about a student-teacher relationship, specifically a female teacher and a young male student. And what I think it doesn't do right is that it slightly glorifies it in a way. It just, I feel like glorifies the predator. Really shocking. A couple of moments I was like, oh my Jesus. Jesus. Uh, what am I reading? And then a book that I really didn't enjoy, but again, probably still to this day lay, leaves me so shocked, and that is The Heart is Deceitful Above All Things by JT Leroy. If you don't know who JT Leroy is, they're probably better known by the controversy surrounding this novel and the author. JT Leroy is actually Laura Albert. Laura Albert didn't even just have a pseudonym, she created a whole different person to be a representative of her and her writing. She said that she was able to really explore these dense topics uh, that she wouldn't be able to explore on her own if it was just her presenting as the author. It's a whole thing. You can look it up. They made a movie about it. But this is a series of short stories that all kind of follow this primary character who is a young boy. He is a foster child. Then he's reconnected with his mother. And then it just kind of follows this cyclic problem in his life. Again, I did feel like it was a little bit exploitive. I don't know if it did anything to raise awareness as opposed to just have shock value. The main issue with this is that the, the main character didn't feel like a person, they felt like an object. I feel like if there was more humanizing characteristics about the main character, I would maybe feel like there is something more than just writing about these shocking instances, but that didn't necessarily happen, so I gotta put it on the list. If it shocks me, I have to put it on there, even if it wasn't my favorite. And then I'm just gonna throw one on there because it was uh, <sighs> a book that I read when I was younger, and I feel like it was kind of one of the first books that made huge waves on the internet because of the, some of the stories that were on there. And that is Haunted by Chuck Palahniuk. Uh, yeah, I think this was the first book that absolutely shook me to my core. If you've read the novel, you probably know exactly which story I'm addressing. But if you don't, it's the story Guts. Just that name in general, you can probably imagine what you're getting into. Actually, probably not. And I've reread that a couple of times since, and it's still, you know, ooh! It still hurts me in some parts. Polonik is just always my kind of go-to shocking author. And if I just want a quick read, he's my little guilty pleasure. So I have to throw that on there as well. But if we're gonna be talking about true books that shocked me, the format of the last book, text I should say, is actually plays. Truly, this is some of the most absolutely wild scenarios in writing that I've encountered, and that is Complete Plays by Sarah Kane. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Insane writing, insane themes, insane premises. These plays are so representative of somebody who's trying to understand what's going on with them internally and just using the pages of, of, of these plays to kind of rebuke the, the tumult that's inside of her. Yeah, wow, these are absolutely wild. At some point, somebody's eyeball 
I'm gonna bleep that. You can imagine that that would be kind of hard to stage, you know what I'm saying? I think that these plays are really darkly kind of cosmic in a way. And again, my, my thing with like disgusting or dark or difficult novels is that if you're going to delve into that realm, it needs to be part of the story. It needs to be integral to what you're trying to say. What are you trying to say in all of this sadness? What are you trying to bring out in these characters? What are you trying to bring out into this conversation of life? I think that these plays do a really great job of, of showing that turmoil that people have. And some of the books that I've mentioned do an amazing job of it as well. But yeah, those are my, literally the most twisted what the novels I've ever read. And I guess I haven't made this sort of video before because I don't want people to pick up books and then have it be a horribly traumatizing kind of experience. But I do find myself looking up these sorts of videos online sometimes, and I do find some really fantastic novels through those searches. Anyway, oh my God, Jesus. <sighs> Let me know what disturbing books have moved you. Which one should I potentially pick up? You guys are wonderful. You're fabulous. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. I ba 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 bye I I <laughs> gotta make it light in here, you know what I'm saying? Peace.